Hello, this is Michael Tellinger, and I'm in Portland, Oregon, USA, with my good friend Mark Walsh, right behind me. And uh, many years ago, when I first met Mark at Contact in the Desert, I was taken by his description and explanation of his very unique skill and ability of being able to bend metal, all kinds of metal, from steel, aluminium, titanium, and specifically the metals that are a problem in the in metal industry and building industry to bend because they crack and they break and so forth. And I finally have had a time to spend with Mark and get, get deeper into his very unique um, discovery and method of preparing and cutting metal so that it can be used in all kinds of applications right across the board imaginable because of his special unique invention and discovery and it's absolutely ingenious so I want to share this with you and with everyone that follows my research and the interesting people that I meet on my travels around the world and Mark is certainly one of those so how's it Mark? Uh, good to be here in your house <laughs> Doing. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thanks for uh, looking after us on our USA tour 2019. My pleasure. And finally, I'm very excited to ask you questions and show off your incredible discoveries and inventions of how to prepare metal to be bent by the hand. And that's yeah. what I recall you first telling me that you, you know how to bend metal with your hands. Yes. And that's really because you discovered a way to prepare it so that you can bend it with your hands. Correct. Correct. So, all right. So I'm just going to quickly show just some of the examples you got here without giving away too much, um, which is just absolutely incredible. You can see some of the, the metals that have been prepared and bent. And uh, there on the edges, on the corners, are really the the, I guess, your secret uh, discovery and invention on, of how to prepare the metal so that it can be bent and molded. Here's a, a beautiful piece that you can take us through what this actually was. Let me just get in there. And, uh, and then some of these other examples down here of bent metal and this beautiful little <laughs> stove, oven, <laughs> replica. Okay, so take us, take us through this. What, what are we looking at here? So the idea is that when you bend metal, typically we bend it in a press break. And the tool we use, we have a die and a punch, and you bend metal. And what you're doing is you're creating tension and compression. And eventually over time, with vibrations and harmonics and stuff like that, you, be, you have a stress zone, so eventually it will crack, any kind of metal. And so our goal was not only to figure out how to fold metal by hand, but how to fold metal so that you don't have tension and compression, so there are no stresses. And so what we did is we, we related back to Moore circles, and Moore circles stated that metal is in its most elastic state in a state of a torus. But there were no tools of how do you achieve that, how do you get there. And so we've been thinking of this process for many years. And um, we started with this sample, which is kind of a hybrid. And the idea is this is a, a bend and a twist. And it wasn't fully successful, but we were able to do a lot of things with it. Uh, we were able to discover how to do metal origami. And this was something that uh, I invented a few years back with how to create origami metal. So what you're looking at here, this is a, a trophy, but it was a scaled version of an interior for a car, which I designed for BMW. You have a, the top dash, pinnacle, and the structure. Ah. So this is only two pieces of metal. Okay, so hold on. So, so this is a dashboard. So just so that when people are looking at it, because you know, from this angle, it looks like a weird animal head <laughs> with you know, the skull here and stuff. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. So what are we actually looking at is a, a dashboard that you did for BMW, yes. and then this was the award yes. that they gave you, a miniature version of it, is it? Which I had to design this as well, oh, yeah. and I gave out the awards, and I gave one to myself, of course, but this went to, uh, they had to design a BMW, and, and everyone that was involved in creating this um, one-of-a-kind car, this 
dashboard sits inside of a million dollar car that is in the museum in Munich. Right. So okay. So, so this is a dashboard. Instrument panel. Yeah. Right? Instrument panel. And you have some other controls. The top dash. And the actual car has tiny little holes, laser cut into along here, where they stitched leather onto it. It's, it's got leather all around it, so it really looks nice. Uh, the idea was it to kind of resemble the old style cars where they did make the interiors out of metal, but bringing a new style into it. Asymmetry with the, the flame design, who was um, invented by Chris Bangle. Okay, so now you said something interesting before I interrupted you. Uh, you said that this, this whole dashboard was made out of two pieces of metal? Yes, it is. Yeah, and what you're looking down here, this, the bottom, is the top. Oh, and okay. Every line you see, there's a fold line. So where it folds in, it comes back out, and comes down, and you have folds underneath that create this dish surface. So to create a curved surface, you need an opposing fold to create that. And that was the challenge, is to figure out how to create curves that worked in harmony rather than fighting against each other. And it was a challenge to learn how to do it because we wrote the handbook as we went. You know, I, I developed this. I'm pretty much the first person to ever create this. There is no other of its kind. And all this goes together with self-locating tabs that would twist and rivets. There's no welding. No welding. There's no so machinery used to form this other than my hands and maybe some folding jigs that I used for the actual uh, piece that's in the car. It was all done by hand. Okay, so now I recall you telling me something about the tests that were done on the BMW, which I believe stands in a showroom somewhere in Germany, in Munich. There was a chassis that we built for Bentley. Oh, for now, Bentley. Now okay. this chassis was, instead of like this really fancy stainless interior, we did a, a T6 aluminum chassis that was all folded pieces to make actual tubes, structures. It was all held together with glue and rivets and uh, we sent it to them and they assembled it with some other parts and some carbon fiber and they put it on a vibrational test which is a common test that they would do with car chassis. Typically about 40 hours the welds start cracking and pieces start falling off and eventually the frame would disintegrate through um, the vibration at about 40 hours. Uh, our chassis ran at 90 plus hours with zero failures. None. Zero failures, zero failures, 90 plus hours. So the, the key is, and what I like to call it, is what we've created is happy metal. And the reason I call it happy metal is because the, the metal really is happy. There are no stresses in a stress zone. The stresses actually flow through. When we ran uh, FEA analysis on this, there are no red zones here. The stresses will flow through the bend along with any stresses, harmonic frequencies, vibration, pass right through the bend, which is pretty much unheard of. Yeah, just... And the reason that is, is because when the metal folds, the bend is not a bend, it twists. This is a torus. All right. So what we have created, in essence, is more circles. Metal is in its most elastic state in the state of a torus. This is a torus. It's a torus fold. Wow. So we call it torsional strips. Torsional These are the torsional strips within the fold, is what we've created. And since this theory, which we've proved is, is fact, um, works in all metal, as stated, but never proven, in all metal being like G4 titanium. So this is T6 aluminum, which you cannot then in a press break without a large inside radius because it cracks. Okay, so let's, let's talk about the metals, right? So that, that is... Al aluminum or aluminium? This is and T6. This is the aircraft version, which is highly brittle, high tensile strength. This isn't your standard aluminum that you would use to, you know, build a, a domestic normal, domestic, domestic aluminum. Yeah. This is what they use for aircraft. Oh wow! Okay, and so to bend that, what what would what would it normally take to bend this kind? To bend of it, the the tooling you have to use, you'd have to use like an oversized bottom die, and you'd have to have um, a radius, a larger radius inside to create. A bigger area of bend because if you were to do like a standard tight bend it would just crack it would just snap oh wow bend. okay and now now you bend you created this technique that you invented this is your baby your invention your creation yes. and and you can now take this aluminum and you can or aluminium for those outside of the USA 
and you can bend it like this. And what happens? Does it weaken the, the does where wherever you bend it there? Does it weaken the metal? Absolutely uh, not. If if anything, you, you you've strengthened it. Now see that would to it's, to it's a no an, it's an oxymoron for most people. Exactly, you strengthened it to a, to a non trained person when you say well you've created this bend and you've cut it up so that you can bend it with your hand by the way which you've pointed out that's really important you've yeah. you've created this invented this way to cut and prepare metal so you can literally bend it with your hands into the shape that you want to be it it to be in yes and when you bend it. It doesn't weaken the metal, it strengthens the metal. That is just unbelievable. Because you're creating structure, just like in this, right? So this is a structurally sound piece. I've put curves into it. And if uh, people that understand metal, if you add folds and curves into things, and you put an arc into something, you've strengthened it. Yes. And so, you know, some of our designs, you know, we'll, we'll do arcs and curves to strengthen things. Um, this is uh, standard 304 stainless steel, which is pretty easy to bend, um, but not by hand. You need a press brake, you need tooling, a tool and a die, and yeah. a lot of tonnage to bend it. Um, but I can unbend it as well. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. And I can bend it back again with no spring back, and this is stainless steel. That's, that is just amazing. I mean, you just did that right there with absolute ease. You just yeah. took stainless steel, you bent it, and it stayed in the position you bent it into and then you bent it right back and it's staying in the position. Yeah, it, and, 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 and with the, the less uh, tensile strength, the more cycles. So if you're using like regular steel or regular aluminum or stainless, you can cycle it. It becomes like a hinge. So completely unheard of. And this, this is just the tip of the iceberg. This, this is the most controversial piece here. Uh, this is G4 titanium. G4 titanium. Okay, so let's just re recap a little bit. So we started with alu aluminum, aluminium, yep. and T6 that's right. aircraft standard T6. Al yes. T6 aluminium, aluminum, then stainless steel right here, yep. um, special technique to bend it and prepare it and be able to shape it in, into any kind of form. And, uh, and also, you've also then obviously figured out how to create the cuts. So when you, when you do bend it with your hand, or by hand, uh, it takes on certain shapes and curvature like you've demonstrated in this dashboard yes. um, in the BMW. And so basically, really the recipe is the design. So here's a flat piece we can kind of get a, a better understanding of what the, the geometry looks like. So what we figured out is by creating this particular geometry is what creates the torus. So when you take this piece of metal and then you apply the pressure to it and you bend it, what's happening with the metal before your eyes is it's twisting. You can see the yeah. shape. Yes. That is a torus. This is a torus fold. Oh my goodness. Man, this is unbelievable. This is ingenious because, you know, people that follow my research certainly will know about the importance of toroidal fields in nature, in creation, and in everything, in advanced technology. And it's no coincidence that it's a torus that makes this work. Yes. And this theory has been around for a very long time, but no one's really known how to achieve it until now. And, uh, well, that is your secret patent. That's your yeah. special formula. How, so to, how this, to do that? Yeah, this geometry is fully patented. Um, that is our secret sauce. And like I was saying earlier... And I just love the fact that you picked it up and you bent it with a hand. Because yeah. you talk about bending metal with your hand and there you did it. Yes. And it was seemingly very easy. And now... So, and what metal is this? Uh, this is electro-galvanized steel, which is used um, in uh, construction. Well, at least we want to use it in construction because it doesn't rust. Yes. And you can use steel and you have to worry about paint it. A lot of times people will use kind of like a hot dip galvanized, which uh, over time it doesn't really hold up that well. So this is a, a little bit additional cost, but the process to make this is so inexpensive that you're, you're still saving money. And we'd rather go with this because it's uh, a little bit more eco-friendly as well. This is this is just amazing. So now, your your objective ultimately, which we're going to come to, is to raise funds to 
get this off the ground and introduce this to the market yes. in the USA and around the world. And I'm going to do everything I can to help you do that because this is really incredible and uh, it'll save people so much money and bring new technology to not just the building industry but design and building uh, of everything. There's well, hundreds of industries that this can affect. Um, I mean, we've kind of tipped the iceberg. We can do automotive design. Design where you're saving money because you can do rapid prototyping in a sense, right? Because you know, right off of the laser you can fold this up and you can test your design. Yeah. Um, you can eliminate processes. There's so many processes that happen, like you have to create a million dollar die to stamp this out, but you couldn't stamp it out this way. You would have to attach another piece. Right? right. This would have to be multiple pieces if you were to stamp it out with multi-million dollar dies on a multi-million dollar machine. I've only used one machine. I just used the laser to cut it and that's all I needed. Wow. So you save the company millions of dollars yes. building the die when you can just plan it, design it, prepare the, the sheet, bend the metal, fold it, create the prototype, whether it's a motor vehicle, whether it's a fancy design, whether it's a dashboard for a BMW like this. A bicycle. We make uh, bicycle frames out oh my of folded metal. We have yes. bicycles. Oh yes. Motorcycles. I mean, so, so you obviously have been through this in your mind for many years now. When did you first discover this? Um, I first started working with this in, I think it was about 2008. 2008. So it's 11 years now while we're making this video. Yes. 11 years sitting on this amazing new discovery, this patent, this special technique, and this is the time. 11 is a good number. Yeah, and it took four and a half years just to get the patent wow. alone. And uh, that was a big piece because I really didn't want to share it with the, the market or the world until I knew I was fully patented and protected with this. Yeah, look, this is obviously, it's, it's quite intricate to figure out how to do this. That's why it took you so long. Yeah. And also you have a background in understanding this kind of thing. Just so people know your, a little bit about your background, how come, you know, what do you do to be able to understand this so well? Um, so I'm a mechanical engineer, but um, I grew up in the sheet metal background. I started working in sheet metal when I was 17. Um, I worked in the precision sheet metal in the Silicon Valley, uh, designing computer systems for 20 years, and eventually left and went into the design side. Um, because uh, of my abilities with the metal, people wanted to have that on, on the design side. They wanted to ha have my secrets. And eventually, I got pulled into this company, this startup company, um, that was working with the, the origami. And I helped them create this stuff for the automotive side um, just by, by testing my imagination. It really was what it was. Yeah. It forced me to think outside the box and, and I fully accepted the challenge and, and was looking for something that really was different and challenging for me to just go beyond anything that's ever been done. Um, okay, so, so let's, let's back up a little bit here. Yes. So, uh, and just re, reintroduce or remind people, we've got a metal bending technology and technique for any kind of metal imaginable. Was that right? Yeah, and that's what I was saying before. This is G4 titanium. So G4 titanium uh, basically is not rated for bending. So that means you can't put it in a press bake and you cannot bend it because it will just get to a certain point and it snaps. So when you try to bend it because of high tensile strength material, when you try to bend it, what it does is you'll start to bend it, you'll take it out of the machine and it springs back. And you'll yes. bend it more and it springs back. And then finally, when it gets to the point where you have to over bend it to get it to hold its shape, it snaps. And breaks. And breaks. Mm. Um, and this they, particular. And, and, and you're holding, I, that, I can, that's titanium you're holding in your hand. This is titanium, and I am bending it with my hands <laughs> without all the spring back and holding its shape. So if with anyone. A very tight inside bend radius, which is impossible. So if anyone has any doubt that this can be done, you're actually doing it right now. And let me zoom in so people can see what it looks like and how it's being prepared. And there's that internal inside that crevice there. This is the special cut that you developed. And there it is. There's the titanium. And just to show people, okay, here's a piece that, um, that wasn't uh, cleaned up on the outside. You can see it has the original stamp. This is G4 titanium. 
G4 Titanium. For people that know how to look for, for metal stamp authentication, there it is. Um, and here's something that you'll never see. Oh my goodness. Okay, you heard a little pop? Yeah. Okay, a little pop is it starting a craft, but you can't, you can't do this. No, 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 I, I, I have one little pop. Yeah, and you've bent this many times. Yes, yeah, yeah. I've bent this a couple of times. Yeah, exactly. Admit, yeah. Which you can't cycle, but I, I've cycled it and I've bent it past 90 degrees. Yeah, that's remarkable. Let's, let me just zoom in there to show, show how that, that looks on the inside there. And this is one of the uh, one of our older geometries where the the twist is not relieved. You can see this is the older style. It doesn't have the um, extra curve that comes back yes, out. Yes, yes. So this I, one this one was a little weaker. This yes, is the stronger one, right? Yeah, here. I notice immediately this cut there, that pre pre preparation here is is different from the other ones. This is an earlier development phase where it it um, had a little bit of an argument. Yeah, but. This, this one over here is a little happier. This is happier metal. Wow, and that's also titanium. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah these are Oh, both. that's the titanium. G4 yeah, titanium. Okay. okay. The last sample I have here uh, is another super brittle metal, and this is magnesium. magnesium. Most people don't even work with magnesium. It's actually the only flammable metal that there is, um, but it has the weight of plastic. Let me feel that. Oh my goodness, it's, it weighs nothing. Yeah, it's like plastic. Whoa, it, it's absolutely, it almost feels like plastic in your hands as well. Right. So let, me just, let me just tap it so, well maybe you tap it, I've got one hand. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it is metal, it's a magnesium. Yeah. Um, also a, a, a very a brittle metal to just bend. Just hold it still, let me get in on that bend, on that cut. Wow. Now, as you can see, so this is laser cut. A lot of these are, are laser cut and some have a gap. So what we're trying to illustrate also, not only can you do this on a laser, but if you were to mass produce these on a, on a punch press where you actually had a, a punch, we have developed a punch. This was actually done with a punch. We own the rights to the tooling as well. So we can punch these out if you were going and into a, a stamp version, which is how this piece was done as well. This is not laser cut. Yeah. So, so you don't need laser technology to go into that kind no, of. No, it's great for prototyping, and it's great for if you wanted to have the very tight, the tight bend where you don't want a gap, right? Where you don't see the gap. Yes. And what's really cool about the the, the torus fold, as this this has not been like sanded or deburred, and it's naturally smooth. There are no sharp edges. Yes. You no. Can just I, run your finger over, and it's very smooth. It's very nice naturally yes it actually adds a lovely feature to it as well right which you, you normally you, you you know you don't get that when you go and you bend a raw edge that's been like laser cut a punch you'll, you'll have a sharp burr yeah there are there are no burrs here yeah there's nothing you know, it would be cutting me and then so tell me about this little whirlpool box that 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 whirlpool box is it's cute and so fascinating right it, yeah. it is because you know it's, this is a, a challenge so this is a, besides the door you know i have a little bit of a door here um, this is one piece of metal. What? <laughs> is that one piece of one, metal? One piece of metal. If I can get it to open. I remember the first time you showed it to me, you opened it up and it's fully functional on all levels. Now, yes. Uh, you know, it locked on me. There we go. Because it's very important that you see the inside. Oh my goodness. And this is one piece of metal? Yeah. Yeah, the door attaches with the hinge, but the whole box itself oh my goodness. is one piece of metal. There's no fasteners. It self-locates and it self-locks. You could never take it apart. You'd have to destroy it to take it apart. Whoa. So this is a demonstration of folding metal, but this is also a demonstration of true origami where you can create a structure without fasteners, without welding. This is unbelievable, and this is the, this is the... So this is, you one. know, people look at it and say, well, that's a cute little box, but no, this, this is a challenge here. This, this, is, is, this is something that you have to appreciate what was created here, and you can see where the last fold is, and so we've sealed it with the dovetail. Right. Which normally you would see like in, in the wood industry, but you can do it in metal as well, where you have a super tight tolerance, and it all comes together 
So that fold in the center of the bottom there is the, the, end. the last fold. Yeah, and these the were end. the last two folds as it comes together. So that's unbelievable. One piece of metal that's folded together, and this is where you finally yeah, put it seam, together. You see the seam comes all the way through. Yeah. All the way through the part. So you have pieces that fold inside. They have little tabs that come up, and they'll push against the surface until they locate in the little clouds. Wow and then it would pop in. And that's why you could never pull it back out. Unbelievable. You're a genius, Mark. This is spectacular stuff. And I see other things lying around. I see there's a box there with some more things in it. Is there anything uh, interesting about that? Or is it just more just, just some more samples. more samples? One thing else I wanted to add, and this is also really kind of ingenious, was that I created a series of, of tumblers that actually lock this. Yeah. There are discs that you turn. Yes. And you can create a locking mechanism. So there's there's so many things that, that you can do that you don't normally see in the market if you just let your mind, you know, yeah. reach for this stuff. It's there. All right. So so these are all lovely examples of what you can do with your technology and your special creation, inventive way of uh, preparing metal to be bent, folded, molded, and joined together, made very strong. As you mentioned, this has been tested. Bentley did, did, did the stress test just to remind our yes. viewers again. How long did they did they put ninety plus hours? And they took it off the machine because they said it, it, nothing was happening. That's okay. the longest they've ever ran any chassis uh, in history. And, uh, and the and, reason. And but let me add to that. So this chassis has no welding. No welding. Went okay, together let's with just... rivets and two guys, myself and one other guy built this chassis with our hands, with some folding assistant, we had jigs, no equipment, hand, hand equipment. So you took a piece of metal, you cut it and prepared it, and then you belt, bent it by hand into the chassis of a Bentley. Yes, and not only that, not only two people built it by hand without equipment, it's the lightest and strongest chassis that's ever been built. So the question is Lighter than the yeah. Ferrari chassis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the question comes to mind, why is it that Bentley doesn't utilize that, right? And, and so knowing what's going on in the world and how capitalism works, I've already formulated an answer to that question, and I'm sure you know the answer to that as well. We're not going to del d delve or dwell on that because that's <laughs> negative thinking. We want people to open their minds while they're watching this and imagine possibilities yes. of using the techniques and, and tools that you've created what can be done with this? Because I see the sky is absolutely the limit here. The mind is the limit. The mind is the limit. Um, and you think about, think about the bicycle industry and how many different types of bicycles. You have road bikes, you have mountain bikes, you have BMX bikes, you have so many different types of bikes. What do they all have in common? They're all made out of tubes that are welded together or they're made out of carbon fiber. Now what we're introducing is we can fold metal into a tube. And the structure that we've been using, uh, how it comes together at the joint, would be a square, and then it goes into a triangle, and then into a square, what it would attach to the other components with a slight arc. By doing that, because we've created this triangle, we've made a tube that is very, very strong, stronger than a round tube. It's kind of like what you see in some of the hydroform tubes, but it's a folded metal and it goes together with the glue and rivets like we did the car chassis. So what did we take yeah. out? We took out all the welding. Now if you think about high tensile strength materials, what happens when you weld them? You've changed their temper. So in order to take it back to where it came from, you would have to anneal it again. So that's another whole process. And sometimes in that process of kneeling, it wants to change shape. So you no longer can you hold the shape. So what we can do is not only hold precision, but precision folding, precision of, of the assembly of the parts and how they go together, but the whole frame itself and making a structurally sound component. We can make frames out of titanium, which in the past there have been some titanium frames, but they weld them and what happens, they would fail at the welds. They would crack eventually over the stresses that yeah. they altered the material. So that's, that's the main thing here, just for people that aren't aware of what's going on here. Welding actually is a weak spot. It's always the weak spot on whatever structure you make. Yes. Your, your uh, technique actually strengthens the bends and the connections because yes. it, 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 it's like 
comparing drywalling to walls with concrete in between. The drywalls are always stronger. They'll withstand earthquakes and so forth, while bricks and stones with water in between will create cracks. Exactly. And they'll crack and they'll eventually break. Yeah. So that's really what, what you've done here. Yeah. And, and I want you to understand, when I say glue and rivets, the, the glue that we use is a two-part uh, epoxy that was formulated for aircraft industry. So this is what they use to hold jets together. Um, basically, I could go back and drill all the rivets out and it would still be fine. It would never come apart. Hmm. Um, and, and so now let's move on to the next obvious uh, yes. step, which is what we discussed uh, earlier. <laughs> yeah, and this is what I want to demonstrate over here. I don't know if my wire is long enough to get to you, but... Uh, so the, the piece that I just showed that I did the test fold on is a corner bracket that would hold together wood framing for like if you were building a house. Yeah. You put one on either side. So, so in essence, we're talking about a whole different application for the building industry, home, home building industry and construction industry. Home building, construction, greenhouses, barns, yurts, sheds, whatever you want to build, this changes how you would put something together. No nails and no temporary flat plate that you would attach to hold it in place while you put a nail in place that still eventually would fall apart if you add any kind of stresses or vibration to it. Yes. What we've created here is something that actually takes the two pieces of wood and makes it into one. Yeah. You cannot move this. Yeah. And the, those pieces of wood are just put together. They're just placed together. Just placed This together. one placed against that one and then attached with your bracket. Yes. It just shows the other side. What does it look like on the other side? Let me side, do, a, so. do a mirror image. And you're starting with this. So you go to build a house. You want to put these two pieces of wood together. You get a box. Parts come in the flat. That's the other thing. All this could be in the flat, shipped in the flat. And you can the bend them with your hands. And I can bend it with my hands and say, okay, let's put those pieces of wood together now. Yeah, look, I just love the way you bent it with your hands. It's ridiculous. If you're trying to bend a piece of metal with your hands like that, it's ridiculous. And, and so this, this, these little flaps on the side, bent with the hands, that's just fantastic. And this is the main, the main piece. This is the joist bracket of all joist brackets because what we've created here is a total solution. So a joist bracket for those outside the USA would be, I don't know American building terminology, a joist bracket would be something that's used at the apex of a roof or something like that? Yeah, this is what is your basic structure. This holds your two by fours or in this case a two by six. Here's your top beam of a roof. You can also use this bracket. You put it on this end. Here's your roof tie coming down to your side beam. Yeah. Now the reason this is so much better than anything that you normally would see on the market, which typically you would have a single piece that comes into the corner that pretty much holds it together while you nail it or screw it or do something else. And then you have to put another piece over here and you hope that it's square. It may not be square, but eventually you can kind of shape it into it. It won't always be perfect. This will always be perfect because this metal is all one piece. It's one piece and it's precision cut. Precision so when cut. you bend it, it bends according to the pre-precision cuts made for you. Which, not only that, in all of our tests that we've done, when we folded these, we were able to hold five thousandths of an inch tolerance in folding. Five thousandths of an inch. Just say that again. Five thousandths of an inch precision folding. Oh, this is this is something that the building industry will go crazy about, surely. So this is the strength of a clamshell, right? It completely wraps around. One piece of one piece one of metal, piece of one metal. sheet. One sheet of metal wraps all the way around all pieces and then ties into the centerpiece. You can either tip this out, if this is an end, then you keep those inside. And what's happening here is you're taking this structure, let's say you want to build an A-frame. I'm going to build an A-frame. So I have my pieces at the 45, and I have my pieces coming down on the sides, and I have a bottom piece. 
When you put it together with these brackets, you'll use three brackets. You cannot parallelogram, you cannot twist it. It basically turns it into a solid piece and it functions like a solid piece. And we've had multiple guys standing on a frame with all of our strength trying to move it or get it to budge. It will not budge. It will not move at all. The wood would give before the structure would. So this is just a very beautiful and I believe necessary component that needs to be introduced to the building industry. Yes. Uh, simple, easy to use, easy to apply, especially for people that are not necessarily building savvy. It's, you know, color by numbers. Exactly. Build, build this by is numbers. like building houses becomes like putting together a Lego. Yeah. Um, everything yeah. self-locates. You fold them on the fly. You don't really need instructions. You can't do it wrong. You can't bend it backwards. Yeah. <laughs> because it's, 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 cut. it's typical. It's atypical. You can't, even if you, you bent it wrong, you unbend it and bend it right. Right. Um, it's so structurally sound that now we can go 10 foot on our spans, which normal application is 6 foot. So you're saving material as well. Uh, not to mention you never have to do any miter cuts. People are, you know, oh, you got to miter cut it, and you got to get that corner bracket there and nail it in. You got to know how to, you know, you know, do the do the, the claw with the nail. And here, you don't have to do any of that. There's no special technique. You fold up the metal, you slide your pieces of wood in, you put a screw in, you're done. Give me the next piece. Let's go on to the next section. Mm. The time that you save building a house, the materials that you save building the house, mm. and you've introduced a new structurally sound house. Beautiful. Okay, so, and this is obviously still just the tip of the iceberg. You'll, once this gets off the ground, you'll be introducing other components, other new um, creative inventions uh, to help building and construction run smoothly. So, where to from here? Um, as I said before, the mind's the limit. I have, I have um, several other projects that I have going in my head that I test out in paper. Um, I could build furniture with this. I have mm -hmm. models that I've worked on in paper where I've developed uh, really fancy chairs that are two pieces. And I can create the curves of the lumbar, and create structure into the legs. Um, beautiful pieces of metal art that actually are structured and functional. Um, the bicycle industry is huge. Motorcycle, automotive, construction, um, art. Um, we can create I beams. Uh, the thing is, when you're folding it, you don't need heavy equipment. You can have um, some of the stuff stamped out and on a roll. Take it off of a roll and put it into uh, a device that would just kind of push it into shape, like a roller. And you can roll out I beams and make structures on the fly, on the job site. All right, so the idea is uh, we made this video so that you can share your invention and your creation with the world and at the same time attract investors or people that want to uh, get behind the launch of this with your, uh, with your funding initiative. Yes. Um, I know how difficult it is to raise funds for for ideas that will change the world. You've been experiencing it for 11 years now, or at least six yes. years. Yes. So this is a great opportunity for people who love this kind of thing and conscious millionaires who want to help change the world to get involved. Yes. Um, um, fund some of the startup costs to get this out of the starting blocks and be part of something that's absolutely beautiful, unique, creative, arty, inventive, and feel good about who they are and what they're contributing to the world by getting involved with Mark Walsh and his amazing metal bending techniques. Yeah, and what's really interesting, it's really not going to take a lot of funds to get this going because this particular piece for the building the homes has already been completely proven out. I have stacks of these that yeah. are ready to go in, mm -hmm. but I need to finish my uh, certification and licensing to build homes. Yeah. Which has to go through a process that we do here in the United States. 
um, and then I need to uh, you know, create a new website and then a marketing tactic. But once this takes off on its own, it will fund everything else. Yeah. The rest will just be a snowball. All right, so my message to anyone watching this, find Mark's website, uh, find his email. If you want to get involved, get in touch with him. Don't waste his time and energy. Only get in touch with him if you actually want to do something and have some funding for this amazing initiative, absolutely uh, fantastic breakthrough initiative. And, um, and be part of something that will probably be one of the most exciting new areas of um, engineering and technology development. Yeah. It's, it's a game changer. I think once people really understand the implications that are here, this is a game changer for manufacturing on a global scale. Um, it affects global markets. Um, and you can see more samples. You can see like the, the bike frame that we've done and there's some samples of uh, the, the chairs that I'm talking about on the website and it's called Ronin Metal Masters dot com. Okay, spell that. R-O-N-I-N-M-E-T-A-L Masters. M-A-S-T-E-R-S <laughs> dot com. Okay, Ronin, I was Ronin. just the Ronin. Oh, so it's R-O-N-I-N. R-O-N-I-N. Ronin. That's the true Ronin. Ronin Metal Masters dot com. A samurai without a master. Right. Okay, Mark, it was fantastic. Thank you for sharing your beautiful invention and creative skills with us. And I look forward to seeing this launch to the world and change people's lives. Yeah. And if you want to contact me personally, you can reach me at my email, which is U-R-O-M-A-N 44 at msn.com. Fantastic. Until next time. Bye for now. Thank you for having me.